Welcome, you smelly three-eyed rodents. In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at the Tekans. The Tekans are a, uh, a small, furry, rodent-like race with three eyes that see no value in washing regularly. <laughs> These are the hobbits of space, the halflings of, uh, of, the, uh, of the cosmos. Uh, they're actually a, they're a, they're a faction I, I never wanted to see, like, to be honest, in Distant Worlds 2. I was surprised when they were one of the seven, but they're actually pretty damn good, actually, in the end. Uh, I have warmed to them. I have warmed to them. Uh, but they, like, my initial thought, I've never played the Tekken in, in the original game. I just It was just a, a an instant avoid for me. Um, but with only like a handful of, a bit more than a handful of, of, of uh, races originally, uh, with the with the game, it was sort of like, oh well, look, we'll give them a go, and they're actually not bad. They're very very nuanced, uh, so we'll go through that in this episode. My name is Daz Tactic. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the series. Hope you've been enjoying it so far. Uh, as I say, in this one, we're going to be looking at this uh, these small rodents. These are the the Jawas from the Star Wars universe. You know the uh, the sort of the small meter one meter tall um, group that sort of were uh, the scavengers, the scavengers of Tatooine. Uh, this is essentially what we've got uh, with the Tekans. They're sort of like the scavengers of space. Uh, so anyways, Tekans take a special interest in hoarding all kinds of mechanical junk, disassembling and repairing the items they collect. Tekans have very little technology that is truly original, but they can occasionally progress to the point of being spacefaring. So Tekans, Tekans are born traders, profitably share, uh, selling their wares far and wide. They also ex uh, excellent miners, rapidly exploiting any natural resources they discover. Uh, despite being fairly insular, they are very peaceful and make very loyal allies, should you wish to befriend them. There we are. So that's the Tekans. Um, you can have a read, bit of a read through more of that if you're wanting to. Um, yeah, so any, anyway, actually before I get started, I forgot to, uh, of course, thank uh, my Patreon supporters and anybody that's sort of been buying any merchandise. You can buy the game, by the way, if you are sort of looking, interested and you don't actually have Distant Worlds 2. I do have a link below uh, to my Nexus game store uh, with a link in there, like basically with Distant Worlds uh, 2 available from that particular store. If you do want to help out the channel, you can do, you can certainly do it by, by grabbing the game through there. It shouldn't cost any more than Steam, maybe just double check. If, you, if Steam has got like a special deal that isn't actually on it on the Nexus Game Store, then uh, by all means get it through Steam, get the cheaper version. <laughs> anyway, but uh, but if not, then usually they're usually about the same price, or they usually are exactly the same price. So let's have a look at the Tekans. So um, remember, I think Jawa to a degree is probably the way to really sort of consider them uh, if you've if you've you know watched the Star Wars. Uh, I've actually got a friend who hasn't watched Star Wars. Anyway, that's another story. I was just going to say, who hasn't watched Star Wars? Actually, I know someone that hasn't watched Star Wars. Uh, the original, I mean. So anyway, aggression, negative 10. So they're actually they're, they're heading, tending towards passive, but like the Jawa, they're annoyingly... Um, not passive, but just annoying. <laughs> so anyway, they're negative 10 in through there. They're not... Like, it's got uh, caution is negative 10, which makes them t tend towards the reckless end of the spectrum so they're, they're again they're not they don't consider um risk before they like a little bit they, they consider some risk but they don't consider a lot of risk before they act uh dependability is zero so they will actually flip around it does sort of say that they'll be uh, if you make uh, they'll be loyal allies should you wish to befriend them no not really <laughs> <laughs> this is a bit misleading. I've tended to find that they do flit around a little bit. They're not bad, but they just they're not super loyal. Uh, reproduction rate is plus seven, which is very, very high. Second highest in the known galaxy at this point in time. Uh, migration tendency is plus 30. They really like to move around. Uh, and so they tend to be everywhere. Once you found, f find one, uh, they will make their way onto your worlds. They'll do all sorts of things as you become friendlier and friendlier with them. Uh, they, do, they do like to move. That You'll often find that they will very quickly gobble up other planets. So they do expand very, very fast. Uh, their assimilation rate is also plus 20%. So if you do get a Tekken world, uh, you will be able to convert it reasonably fast. So they're, they're, they're quite a compliant faction. Uh, they prefer sandy desert planets, followed by desert savanna, followed by rocky desert. The other planets, they're sort of like the, the grasslands type planets are all sort of in the negatives at this point in time. Uh, mining rates, massive mining rate boost of plus 25%, so they can get resources very quickly. Uh, damage control of plus 10, re repair rate of plus 20, which is actually fairly cool. Uh, trade income of plus 10%, and also ship construction speed of plus 10 
if you're playing with them with pre-warp, you do start with early iron weapons, early area weapons, ground combat, and tractor beams, which sort of is funny having them with ground combat in, to a degree, uh, but they actually do have uh, sort of like um, weird little extras that they tend to sort of go and get. Uh, for the, the Tekken tech, the unique Tekken tech is, is a large Starfighter Bay. What that actually is, it's not that's a bit misleading. It's not actually the Starfighter Bay. It's the... I forget, I, think it's, I forget what it's called. They've got like a special little ship that is uh, like their Starfighter, uh, and that's what they get access to. The Iron Bomb is really, really interesting. Now, I'm going to actually go through, and this is probably the only one I'm going to do this with. I'm going to show you how to design a fleet in this episode. So we will go through just how to design a fleet to work with the Tekans, because um, even the AI doesn't do it as well as what it should be done. But the, but the Tekans have a quite a unique opportunity with this Iron Bomb. So uh, so we'll, I'll go and show you how to do that as well. Uh, grapple Beams as well, which I don't tend to use on, on my designs. Uh, now, this is their race victory conditions to have the most non-aggression packs in the galaxy. Now, the non-aggression packs are not defense treaties or anything like that. These are just the superficial, I won't attack you if you don't attack me type thing. So it's a, a live and let live type of attitude. So it's not. It's, it's quite easy to get. So they, they they want a lot of those sorts. They, they want that's about as far as they're sort of happy to to go. Uh, once they get those, you know, they, they'll just happily trade away and away they go. Earn the most trading coming in the galaxy is also what they try to do. Start the fewest wars. Uh, gain the most research from t uh, and tech from salvage. Um, this is where like this. These are the scavengers. These are the uh, the the rats. The rats of space. <laughs> you know, they just sort of. If something gets blown up, in come the Tekans to sort of pick pick through all of the rubbish that's left over uh, to see what they can glean from it uh, and destroy the most Vorta cars. Now, the Vorta cars, they've sort of got like a, a hate, like not, not a love hate, they've got a hate relationship with certain beasts. They've got the sandworms that they hate, but they also hate the Vorta cars. Now, the Vorta cars are the strongest of the, of the mundane creatures in space, uh, so they do actually like to sort of destroy them. I think Vorta cars are very susceptible to being hit with the iron weapons. I think that's sort of where that that linkage actually does come from. Their preferred government types are Mercantile Guild and Monarchy, but they can have your standard collection of Republic, uh, Democracy, Feudalism as well, and uh, and Military Dictatorship. But the preferred are the Mercantile Guild for, uh, and the Monarchy. Their Trapper group is their military, the weakest in the known galaxy. These are, these are incredibly weak. And so for the cost of, of 200 maintenance, um, this is the same maintenance cost as, for example, the Mortalins with their, uh, so the same maintenance uh, cost where you're getting like an attack of 140 as opposed to the Tekans uh, rating of 65. So more than double the bang for buck with a Mortalin troop uh, that is what you get for a Tekan. So if you do take over Tekan worlds, do not bother building troops uh, with their with their forces, they're just completely useless. Uh, I'll show you robotic troops as well when we go into the tech tree, just so you can sort of see the comparison of, of why robotic troops for the Tekans are actually a viable option for them. Um, okay, then they the most liked races are the Securin, the Ignari, the Kydian. Uh, none of these are playable, but uh, of the playable factions, they're going to be getting on well with um, the Ikaru, the humans. Um, I don't know about the Harkonish. I'm not sure exactly where they stand with the Harkonish, but the Akdarians as well, the Xenox. So these are the sorts of the sorts of groups that they would actually get on well with. Uh, they're not going to get on well. In fact, you can see there the Day, the, the Mortal, and then the, the Boscara are all at negative fifty. Again, negative fifty just means a dislike, not a, not a not a burning hatred. So they will deal with them, but they don't like to deal with them. So. It's sort of one of those things where they they will interact because uh, after all, what they're interested in is trade. All right, let's get into the game and have a look at this. Right, well here they are with this sandy desert moon. If we just go across into government, sorry, into empire then government, and we'll compare this one with the monarchy. So these are the two that they do like to have: the mercantile guild and the monarchy. Of course, we've seen the mercantile guild before with the Harkonish. They actually do prefer this one as well. And so we've got the counter espionage of negative uh, ten percent back and through here. So they're they're, they're a bit 
uh, easy like it's it's quite easy to target them if you do if you're not playing as the um, as the Tekans but you're playing if you've got Tekan neighbors or something like that then it's usually fairly easy to actually target them for spying missions uh, if they're a monarchy it's not so much if they're a bit more closed off diplomacy goes up with, with the mercantile guild uh, all research is actually also goes up construction research goes up enormously so they're very very good at then building their mining operations their trading operations uh, colony happiness is just normal whereas the monarchy it's down uh, they're both bad with colony colony corruption so corruption will be fairly strong on their planets the mining rate is plus 10 percent back in through here the ship maintenance savings is plus 10 percent uh, as well uh, the uh, f facility maintenance savings is plus 10 percent trade income goes way up if you're playing the mercantile guild you know, I think the Mercantile Guild is the way to play the, the Tekans, by the way. I, you know, it's sort of a bit of a no-brainer to a degree. Uh, colony income goes up by 10%. Now, the war weariness, they don't like being at war. So this is the this is where the monarchy does actually have a, an advantage. They're a bit more militant if, they, if they're a monarchy. The high-tech research also goes up in, with a monarchy. The troop recruitment, troop recovery, troop maintenance savings, and, and the tourism income all go up with the, with the monarchy. Um, now, the special ability that they have is they can manually control mining ships. And we mentioned this when we were looking at the Harkonish as well. This is actually quite quite a good one to have, particularly in the early game, where you're looking for very specific resources and you, know, you may not need many of them to build the next thing that you need to build. And a, like a, a good example of that is steel. Uh, quite often you'll be running out of steel very, very early. Steel will be close by. You can then just grab one of your mining ships I think it's a mining ship there. Yep, there's a mineral miner. And I, with with this particular one, I can go and tell it to go and, and uh, do something very particular. Like I can go and give it give it orders. I don't know if I can do it over there. Yeah, mine Seneca 6 and then offload at the Lumen Spaceport. So if I do that one, uh, it's now going to go off and do that. If I unpause the game, it will then sort of move around and start to head off in that direction. But it's now gone to manually controlled. So whenever you do anything like that, where you're given a specific order of what you want it to do, uh, just go back and click on this and make it fully automated again, just so that it, after it's done that particular job of mining Seneca 6 and then offload at the Lumen spaceport, after it's done that, let it go back and do its own thing. Um, it's uh, it'll otherwise it'll just be basically stuck doing one thing essentially. So uh, that's that's a, a, a massive bonus because no one else can do it other than the Mercantile Guild to manually control their control their own ships. Uh, now this is actually interesting as well. The typical leader term is forty years as opposed to sixty years for the monarchy. The typical leader change method is election here, but it's direct appointment through the uh, through the monarchies. Uh, the leader change effect for the Mercantile Guild is a, is a mild boost. Mild, mild positive boost when there is a change of leadership, whereas it's mildly disruptive for the monarchies. And again, from either one, it can be uh, the appointment can come from anywhere in the in the organ in the um, in the in the empire. Um, the startup situation that they, that they actually have. So the the mercantile guild uh, can get expanded civilian ships and also expanded space stations. So these these again sort of allow them to get the bigger mining stations, the bigger space ports. The, uh, the better uh, uh, trading ships, things like that. So the, the sorts of things that you would expect of a mercantile area, they're going to, at the startup, they're going to actually already have some of these things selected, which is great. For them, uh, the research completed uh, through here, for, sorry, for the research that they get completed for the, for the monarchy is coordinated control, uh, the cruise systems, the planetary palace, and then the and a pre-built planetary palace on the on the actual city uh, on the on your starting location as well. In fact, let's actually start and have a bit of a look at that one because the, we've now sort of gone through. Let's just go and restart as a monarchy. All right, so here we are at the planet of Valina One, and it is we are playing as a monarchy. Uh, but I will just point out at time of recording there is a little bug where only pre-warp gets the predefined areas, uh, like, for example, the palaces and stuff like that. It is a bug. It will be fixed, and it should be fixed fairly soon. So most likely when you're playing it, even if you're playing at higher tech levels, you should get the palace. Now, when you first come in, the palace is not in here. So you can see there's no actual there's no actual structures that we've got. We can, can't even build it. But if I just let the game run forward a little bit, just a few days, I'm then going to get a message. Here we go. We've got the starship. starship so I'll just uh, get rid of that one. And any second now, we should get the next one. There we go. So we're now getting the monarchy. So due to our chosen government, 
uh, we have gained insight into coordinated control, uh, crew systems, and planetary palaces. So, so these will kick in um, after you've like if you've got sort of things that are related to your government, it will come in. I'll just pause this so we can sort of have a bit of a look. Um, so our palace and infantry force are also available in our home world. We just missed that one through there. We then end up with a few different things. A message: the planetary palace research is now completed. So this is this is cool. Uh, so the the project provides the following. I love this as well, by the way, because it's actually what it's just done is it's implanted this inside the uh, the tech tree. It wasn't there before, and we'll have a look at that in just a minute as well. So it's now got that one. We've we've then got the crew systems have been researched. Uh, we've yeah, we've done that one already, uh, completed research into that one, and we've then got um, the coordinated control has also been completed. So we end up with just a few extra extra texts. New Emperor has appeared as well. So uh, if we have a look at the planet now, we end up with one extra trapper group, <laughs> and we now have a facility, which is our planetary, uh, planetary palace. So plus 25% leader quality, plus 5% colony happiness, plus 10% colony defense, plus 10% colony development, and uh, the maintenance cost of 500 credits. And this is good because what this thing does is on this one planet, we then get this benefit. It's a unique building. And in our tech tree for that one, we then have um, into the tech trees, you'll sort of see that, you know, some of the things have been have been, have been been sort of started with what we had uh, already sort of, you know, what we get for free. But at the very, very bottom, underneath the... Um, Underneath the space command, we then end up with a planetary palace, which can only build one in your empire, and so that is what we get for being a monarchy. So that's the benefit in through there. There'll be other things as well across different other um, groups. Anyway, I will leave it there with that, uh, with just having a quick look at, that, at how how that aspect of the game works, and we'll get on get on with it. Okay, so look, under weapons, pretty early on, in this is tech level zero, in tech level one, they end up with the uh, the iron bomb, which is a large weapon. It's uh, like size 48, so it actually chews up a fair, fair bit of space on, the, on your ships. But this is an iron weapon where it actually does damage. Um, you can see there that it's right where my cursor is, and if I move it around, it's going to then go off. But right where my cursor is, we're seeing like iron damage to engines, iron damage to hyperdrives, iron damage to shields, and iron damage to weapons. And so these, uh, when an iron weapon actually does hit uh, a ship, it will then sort of disable, well, it's got a chance to disable these components inside the ship. And so there's a fair bit that it can actually then get and do. And it doesn't destroy or damage them, but it does disable them for a length of time, depending on how much damage of iron damage actually gets through. So it's a, it's a way of stopping ships. And it's a way of actually sort of having you know half the ship not working properly or certain weapons may go offline. So it really disrupts what's happening with the ship. It's a very, very interesting and powerful way of actually tackling it. And the and the iron bomb is a massive development in that in that capacity. Nobody else has got anything like it. If we have a look, for example, at iron weapons as an example, this is the iron cannon, which is just a small size 12. It does 24 damage instead of the 44. The 44 is also, this is a direct fire weapon. So the iron cannon has to directly hit the ship. The iron bomb is basically an area blast wave. It actually it actually hits and expands out, and and anything around that area uh, takes damage or takes iron damage. And so there's a lot of friendly fire potential problems with this. <laughs> but also, if you're if you're fighting masses of other ships, you can actually disable a lot of ships in one go if you catch multiple ships inside the blast radius. Uh, so it is. You can see there the area blast uh, range of 160, which is that fairly big. Like that's the actual that's the area that it impacts when it actually does explode. It's got a range of 1770. It's a very slow moving uh, uh, sort of. Uh, I guess like almost like a torpedo. It's an it's an energy weapon that moves slowly, then explodes like a, like a fireworks. I guess would be a way of sort of thinking about that one. But extremely powerful uh, with what it actually does do. But very very nuanced as well. So it's one of these sorts of things where the um, uh, where um, using it, uh, you've got to make sure that you do the right thing to use it. And I'll show you how to do that in this episode as well. So this may be a bit of a longish episode as we just go through how to actually do that one. So they've got that one. They've also then got the extended range tractor beams. And so these are grapple beams at size 15. These, um, the tractor beam energy use is 28. I never use them, to be honest. Um, they like I mean it would sort of keep things close by if you need them uh, sort of just anchor them down towards where you are so they can't escape 
but the tekens are not very strong anyway, so it would be sort of almost rare that you'd need to do that. So I don't know. I don't know why you would use it to be honest. So I personally don't ever use them. Uh, but then we go down further. There's one or two more, isn't there, that the tekens have got. That's right, down in the Starfighters, in the Fighter and Assault uh, uh, pods. So under Starfighters, it then just comes straight off. So once you get the, your basic bombers and basic fighters, they then actually have a, an attack shuttle that they use. The Zim Zip attack shuttle is their interceptor. And when you do this one, you do get the large Starfighter bay as well. So you go straight to that large Starfighter bay with the Zim Zip, which is the Tekken uh, attack craft. Uh, so it's got a... Um, uh, what's the difference there? I don't. I actually don't even know what the difference is. It's got maneuverability of 18. If we have a look at the uh, attack fighters, that one's 14, for example. So it's more maneuverable. I think other than that, it's going to be pretty much the same. Uh, tech level, it's a level four. That one's level six. Hull size 20. Hull size 20. Yep, maximum size. This one's actually smaller. Um, Countermeasures 37, this one is 30. Yeah, so it's it's slightly better than just a standard attack fighter uh, with that particular one through there. And so that's the other other uh, tech that they do get. Okay, let's have another look now at the various ships they've got. So their escorts have got like one large and one small weapon mount uh, in through here. Uh, three engines, so that's fairly fast just for a basic escort. We think can then come down to the improved escorts. So they've got the patrol and the heavy escort. Uh, again, they've, each of them have got the one large, and then they've got either one or two smaller slots or standard slots. Again, a lot of engines that they can actually place on these. So you're getting the feel already. They've got more engine mounts than, than most other places. Uh, they've got a large, single large weapon mount as well, but you'll see the difference with the, uh, with the good old Tekans as to, uh, as to what that actually does lead to. Uh, when we have a look at the system patrol ships, which is their frigates, again, one large, three, three standard, uh, three engine, so they can move pretty quickly. They do actually get a hangar uh, this early back in the frigates, so they can actually sort of deck out the frigates as, as mini carriers, uh, which is interesting. Uh, the interstellar destroyers have got two hangars, so we're looking at something that can actually be decked out a little bit more like a um, uh, like an Akdarian type ship, and uh, they've got like two large uh, four standards. So there's a bit there that they can pack onto their ships, but what you'll see when we go and actually start designing them, there's a there's a big difference. <laughs> <laughs> between these uh the multi-role starships as well the light cruisers so four large six back and through there if we have to start having a look at the capital ships uh eight and eight so not as big as not not as many weapons as we see on things like the mortal and ships or anything like that but still serviceable but with a weird weird difference i mean these are sort of cobbled together remember the iron bomb uh we're going to go in now and actually start to design some ships so we'll go back across ship design Add new. Uh, we'll just make this one into the state ships just so we can have a, a few less and, and sort by roll. So if we have a look at the uh, escort and just sort of start there, because if, you, if you're if going pre-warp, this is the ship that you'll be using at the very, very start. Uh, and so this has got the one large, one standard back in through this other side. Let's just go and um, manually design this particular hull. So this is it in through here. This is the front of the ship, by the way, and that's the back of the ship where you've got like two weapon engine mounts in the back there and one more engine there. Look where the heavy is. The, the, we've got one big heavy mount at the very, very back of the ship and you've got one small mount at the front of the ship. So it is, it is small and large. There's no mediums. So you've got point defense essentially where the ship is facing and then you've got the actual attack coming from the back. <laughs> so you can't line up. Uh, you can't be chasing something down with your uh, with your rail guns or you, you know or your um, uh, what is it any sort of beam weapon. It's just not going to work with the Tekans. because of that. You can use missiles fairly effectively from the back through here or torpedoes, but nothing else really, uh, except for the iron bomb. Now you don't want to be going overboard with the iron bomb, but you can you can use that because this is. The, the Tekken ships are built for kiting. Uh, kiting basically means where you stay at, at maximum distance away from an enemy, peppering away at what it actually does do. It's it, They really are structured like that. And so you have to sort of set your strategy around a kiting strategy. And I'll, I'll really come into the game in a minute and we'll build a, a small fleet at tech level one so you can sort of see what I mean and sort of see how you can actually then deck them out, how you might sort of want to go and approach that. So anyway, that's the, um, that's the, the that is the, 
The problem and the opportunity for Tekans is that their biggest weapon faces the rear, um, which means they're, they, they're going to be doing most of their fighting while they're running away. So just keep that in mind because that's very, very important. <laughs> so uh, cancel. We'll just go back across now and have a quick look at the others as well. So we just go back and add new. Uh, we'll do the patrol escort, which is the faster of the escorts. Manually create, same sort of deal, small weapon mount, just a, a 19 at the front and, a, and then a large at the back, up to 120 size at the back there. Um, nothing much else going for it, except this one has got more engine mounts than what the previous one had. And so this will be a much, much faster ship. Uh, this one is potentially okay to use, but I think that we might find that the heavy escort is probably going to be the better one to go with if we just have out of the actual escorts once you do get that one through there. If we just go and have a look at this one, uh, we'll manually design. And so this one, we actually do have a 360 on top, which is actually very, very good. Uh, we do actually have a uh, medium now in the front. So we can now get a bigger weapon at the front there, and we still have the large at the back there. So we've got the uh, the large, the medium, and the small, are the three different sizes of turrets, uh, or you know, the turrets that we can actually sort of mount on the, of the hard points, I guess, the size of the hard points on the actual ship itself. A lot less in terms of engines, so it's gonna be fairly slow. Uh, but that is sort of where we are with that particular ship. So that's the escorts. And let's have a look at the frigate and do an edit. Oh, sorry, do a uh, add new uh, frigate. Where are you? Frigate F. I'll just do the uh, it's the standard frigate. Uh, we'll manually create this one here. Again, we can see the big one is at the back. There's our engines running down through there. We do actually have some some interesting angles. Oh, with these in through this side, plus we have another one at the top there with 270. So this one doesn't quite face the back. These do actually angle themselves to face the back, but not the front. So weird, weird Tekken designs like these. You can sort of imagine like, like little sort of scavengers, the little Jawas of space, you know, sort of uh, with these sorts of ships that are all just sort of uh, thrown together, uh, just sort of cobbled together. It's a very interesting faction to play, I've got to say. And it is enjoyable to play them. So don't be put off by the look of what this looks like. But that's the big weapon is at the back. Uh, we'll cancel that one. We'll now go into the uh, add new and we'll go to the destroyer. Have a quick look at that one through there. So manually sort of create this one. Now we're starting to sort of see a, a bit of difference in what we're actually looking at through this side. So now we actually have broadside attacks. And we saw that a little bit with the Harkonish as well. The Harkonish were much more about broadsides. And so the these actually, and these ones do actually have the two different hangar bays. And so this allows them to actually use small craft, but small craft can get caught up as well in the iron blasts. So it's still sort of viable to have these almost as mini carriers. And then you use the, the because the broadsides do mean that they're relatively weak. They do still have a rear, rear facing weapon, but it's only a small, I think. Yeah, we've got a, uh, a small at the back there. So you're looking mainly at point defense, maybe some missiles, but you're not really looking at uh, weapons that are going to be like, not so much beams or rail guns. You wouldn't really use them much with your ships, but there's another good reason not to do that. But we'll, I'll deck out up to probably, I won't probably won't even go to the destroyer level. I'll just go through and actually build a sample fleet just up to tech level one, uh, which gives us frigates and the range of the escorts. So we'll just go and do that in a minute. Uh, but that's the destroyers. Let's have a quick look at the uh, at what we have with the angles that are now coming back in through with the light cruiser. And then we'll call it quits from this aspect. And so this one again, uh, broadsides, but these, these ones do angle towards the back. Uh, it's another small mount at the back there. Uh, they're just a, they're a really crappy design. These ones angle slightly towards the front, uh, these actual weapons. And then you've got other ones that it's just, it's just such a hodgepodge of different sorts of, um, of things that you can do. Again, could be used as a mini carrier if you wanted it to. So let's go back now and actually build a sample fleet. I'll just do it really, really fast. Um, and so, and I'll just go through the things to look for. And so then you can sort of come in and design your own. I'll just cancel out of this one, uh, get rid of that one. And I'm just going to restart, but this time only in tech level one. So just very briefly, Tekken, Mercantile Guild, uh, tech level one and young. I'll just start keeping on young as well at this point in time, but tech level one will just give us limited tech. In we go, start the game. All right, so in we go. We'll just uh, let it zoom on in into this particular location. 
And so we now have very limited tech. Uh, and this is, a, as I say, this is a start that I don't mind doing. I'll just pause the game at this point in time. I'll have a quick look at the tech tree. So what do we have at tech level one playing as the Tekans? And this is a good tech start for the Tekans, to be honest. Uh, we don't have the Zim Zip uh, fighters, but we do actually have the Iron Bomb. So as we scroll through, Iron Bomb, yes, tick, it's, it's with us. Um, we don't actually have the tractor beams. That's okay. We weren't going to use them anyway. Uh, again, there may like, read the comments. I bet you that there's going to be a, a handful of people that will say, "Hey, you can use them for this and that. They're for incredible." <laughs> this is how I make my fleets, uh, but uh, other people have different ideas. Uh, so anyway, you've got the Zim Zips. We're not going to have as well. So I'll just go down into here. We do actually have the Star Fighters as such, but not, we're nothing else. So we're not going to be we're not going to be building the mini carriers just yet. So we, we'll we'll. we'll if we got destroyers, um, yes, I would then build, start to looking at building mini carriers. But just be aware that the fighter craft that you end up having are going to have troubles with the iron bombs that you're going to then be using because they're going to be close to the enemy cycling through and then the iron blast will also knock them out as well. So it'll disable them at the same time as disabling the other ships. So this is it's an awful lot of friendly fire when you actually play as a Tekken. So just be aware of that. So the more distance you can keep from everyone else, the better off your fleets will be. And so let's have a bit of a look and see how we can sort of maybe approach uh, building a Tekken, a Tekken, a small Tekken fleet. So let's just go and exit the research. Actually, and all we have in, in here at the moment is the frigates, uh, the improved escorts. We already sort of figured out that the heavy escort was the one we're going to sort of make use of. So let's let's plan what we how we're going to go about this one. Um, what we need is we need a number of ships that will then have the iron, the heavy iron bomb. We don't need a lot of them. We, we're just going to try to sort of have them going in every so often and blowing up areas of space trying to disable ships. And then we're going to use long-range weaponry to try to then do more damage uh, against the ships that become disabled. So we need to have a fair few fighting-type ships and a, and a handful of iron bomb ships. So if we exit the research and we go into our designers, our ship designs, you'll see it's much, much more cut down now. Uh, we can just go into add new, uh, state ships are still actually in here. And we figured out we'll do the, what I'll do is I'll make the frigate, the heavy, the, the iron uh, attack ship. So we'll just go this way and uh, start that way. So this will be the, an, we'll call it an, an iron frigate for the sake of the exercise. So we'll just go and start. Now, when you're building ships, I will actually do a full tutorial on this one. I'm just going to auto generate the new design using the, hull, the ship hull. Bang, in she goes. Uh, that then sort of fleshes out everything that we don't, don't really have to worry too much about it. There's only a handful of things that I want to be changing in here anyway. Uh, now, what the AI does when it, when it designs ships, it doesn't use the iron bomb. It uses a different sort of area effect weapon on the back, uh, the wave bomb. And so I don't want to use this. So I, I don't want to be using that one. I'm just going to go and click or right click on that one to, to remove it. And we're just going to go back down. I'm going to select um, latest per category and I'm going to sort by bay type and category. Then I'm going to come down. So there's the iron bomb at size 48. The uh, wave bomb that it wanted to use was, I'm not sure where the wave bomb actually is. Anyway, we don't want that. We want the iron bomb. So the iron bomb gets placed into that new empty slot at the back there. So in she goes. That's the iron bomb now placed at the back. Uh, it does have concussion missiles on the front, and it does actually have, if we just sort of hover over the, this one, we've got, uh, what have we got around the place? That one there is the Sentinel from the front. It does go back to a range of 270. And then on the back through here, we've got concussion missiles at... Um, a small concussion missile on the side there. Now we, we're actually oversized, so we're gonna to have to get rid of something. Um, what I can do is I'll probably get rid of the small concussion missile, which is a size 19, and maybe replace that with another, another Sentinel beam and just have this one purely as, a, as, a, uh, as an iron beam ship. There may be other things. We've got a, a, a short sensor array there. Actually, it's got a small Starfighter bay. Ditch that. Ditch that because we, we do want to deck out, like this is now, I've now got 20 more slots, which means I can actually throw another concussion missile on board if I wanted to. Let's do that. So this way we get more bang for buck, or we can go with the uh, with the point defense and the Sentinel multi beam. I might just do that at the back as well. So we'll throw that in. We've got a small small concussion missile. We've got a Sentinel multi beam, two Sentinel multi beams, one for the front of the ship and one for the back of the ship. This will be for, for use against small craft. Uh, so that gives us point defense. It gives us a long range weapon 
in through there and it also then gives us the iron bomb as well so that's sort of where we are now the iron bomb is uh let's have, have a quick look at this one compared to the distance of the concussion missile so if i just hover that one over there uh, you can see there the iron bomb has got a range of 1770 the small concussion missiles are just 30 more than than the than this the range of the uh, iron bomb they're very very close in in size let's have a look and see if there's anything that would be better like if you have a look at a small epsilon torpedo i'm trying to find something that's still long range but shorter than the iron bomb and so in this case we've actually got the range of of 1770 with a um the 1680 you know it's so close to the other one i think i'll actually just still go back to the concussion missile and just use it there now the, what i'm going to be doing is the next thing i'm going to be doing with this ship is, is go up and start to tweak these back up through here i don't want this ship close to anything it's attacking i want it as far away as possible so i'm going to go across to the attack stance against weaker targets and i'm going to make that one cautious which means it's going to go to the maximum range of of weapons which is going to ultimately then be the concussion missile but it's almost the same range as the iron bomb so i think it will still fire off the iron bomb at different times um, so that would be okay so we'll just go cautious there for weaker targets and we'll also do the same thing for stronger targets so we're going to go cautious cautious which means go to the the biggest range of the ship the reason i'm using missiles is because they don't degrade over time they actually are a missile that's fired and so it doesn't diminish any of its actual attack over the course of that time whereas if i had have used the shorter range torpedo it would have been it would have been much more diminished at long range because we're making it cautious cautious all of those attacks are going to be at long range it's going to take a long time for them to go through uh back in through there we've got retreat i do like to set my retreats to 2050 back up through there i won't explain too much about that one just yet uh, uh, everything else is actually okay, so we'll just go and um, and just call this one the uh, the Iron Frigate. Okay, so we'll just go and, and and save and exit that one through there. So we're actually got a, a bit of space there if we if we did want to sort of throw in even more. Actually, no, with nine there can't quite fit a, a fuel in there. We'll just save and exit. I just want to do this one fairly quickly. So we now have an Iron Frigate. I want to make sure because I'm manually designing these, I've got to change this one to manual with the hull upgrade. Uh, so, and you'll notice that that's also now sort of changed the other frigate that we had there, the other Mom Mombasa. So I'm just going to now make this one obsolete. I don't want that one around anymore. I just want my iron frigate. So I've made that one obsolete. I'm manually controlling how these then work. Let's now go and think, okay, well, look, we've got our, we've got our disabling aspect done. Let's now go to the, um, the heavy, the heavy, heavy, uh, escort. So if you just go to add new heavy escort auto generate so i'll just let it sort of build its own thing up and just see what it's got now it also has a wave bomb at the back let's ditch that we've got sentinel multi-beam at the front we've got another wave bomb a medium wave bomb at the front there as well the 360 with the sentinel is perfect let's just get rid of the wave bomb and what we're going to do with these is not bother with those sorts of attacks uh, i think that we just go straight in with the actual um we don't bother with the iron bomb anymore because we've now got the frigate with those. So we now want to do big damage and we want to do that with the concussion missile. So I'll just go to a medium concussion missile, throw one of them on the back, and I can actually fit one of them on the front as well. Unfortunately, we're over, so let's just get rid of that one through there. We've still got a, a little bit of space. Let's just go to a small at the front there. We're still actually over by five. We have three engines. Um, now there's other things that we probably want to do. This is only worth five, actually, these short-range sensor arrays. So I'll actually leave that one there. Um, God, there's not much I can really sort of take away other than taking away another engine. Uh, we can have, One thing we can actually have a bit of a look at, and I don't think we can really do it, is can we remove a fuel cell? The fuel range is actually fairly short, so not really. But if we're doing, like, local defense, we could actually take a fuel cell out. Uh, that would then allow us to then put more missiles on. I think I'm going to have to ditch the missile and uh, so i'm going to have to get rid of this missile here this small missile and just leave it as a as a double as a double mount on the on the, the medium concussion missile and so that then does give us other options though down in here by getting rid of that one so we've got one missile uh we'll get rid of that one through there we do want to make these fairly survivable so we'll go and get put a countermeasure system in uh that then takes us up to a size where we've still got another 10 almost gee we're close you know we are so close I might throw a um, 
I might just leave it at that actually, just countermeasures. So we're a bit under um, with what we're doing. It's a shame. It's sort of one of these things where if I juggled things around, I think I'd be able to get the size that I want. But um, you know, I could actually get rid of one of the engines, for example, and replace that with a um, with a thrust vector. So that the engines are size 20. So I could actually put the missiles back in if I if I made the en if I got rid of one of the engines, uh, put put a thrust vector back in there potentially. And that will still give me then enough, even with countermeasure system, to then put a small... So anyway, I'm rushing through this, but I'll just do this on the fly. That gets us very, very close to the limits. And um, energy usage is fine. And so we now actually have a fairly useful uh, little uh, heavy escort. So this is going to be a missile escort. Okay, we'll call it that. And, we'll, uh, and again, importantly, against weaker targets maybe we make it this one neutral but in reality uh, that just means it's going to use the sentinel beam as well but i could just keep it cautious and i think we'll go cautious here as well against the stronger targets this means it's always going to kite uh if we if we have those two things always going to kite uh retreat when 2050 um that's fine where that is actually so we'll just uh, save and exit Again, we just need to change the uh, the heavy escort to a manual design back in through there, and we're now done with our uh, with our actual ship design. Let's quickly go and, and design up a little fleet. So we we'll just go back across, and let's make these defence fleets. So we we'll just go across into our fleet template. So I've gone to military fleets, defence fleet, edit. Um, we don't use cruisers, we don't use destroyers, so we'll just ditch those. I will use two frigates. And these are going to be the um, the iron frigates, so I'll just throw them into there at this stage. Uh, and then I've got the add item in through this side. These are going to be escorts, which is fine. These are going to be the latest design for the hull heavy escort, which ultimately will be a missile missile escort anyway. And uh, we want to have a, more of these, so maybe sort of like four, maybe six. And that would be a, a good starting one at tech level one to take on pirates and to take on smallish fleets. Uh, it's going to disable very, very effectively. Uh, well, actually, one thing we haven't got on our ships and what may be worthwhile doing is to include one troop transport with these guys to then try to take over other ships or maybe even two. Let's just add another item. I won't actually design the ships, but the troop transport has got assault pods. And so we can actually then go in with the assault pods to then take over the disabled ships. So, so potentially you could do that. Probably not a great idea. Again, leave a leave a leave a comment if you think that's a stupid idea. And I, I'm I pretty I would probably think yeah actually you can do it different ways. But anyway, that's where we'll sort of start. Once we capture a pirate ship, I'd probably remove the troop transports from the from the mix, but keep the pirate ship myself because that also has assault pods. Actually. I'm not sure if we could actually make use of that ourselves. It may be that we could actually throw an assault pod on our frigate uh, or on our escort uh, because we did actually end up with extra space there. Hmm, hang on. Maybe we do. Maybe we do that. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting I'm getting carried away. It's already 40, 40 minutes in. This, but this is a sort of thought process again. Um, you know, I'm just thinking on the fly as to how I might sort of cobble together an effective little fleet. I, I might as well make use of the fact that we're disabling ships. And so I might as well make use of that by actually having ways for, I think, either the frigates or the escorts, either one of them, to be able to come in and actually then capture the enemy ships. So let's just go and leave that one where we are right here. So we'll just go and do that. So eight ships in total is what would end up with, with this particular fleet, which would be fairly powerful against pirates. Uh, if we just go back out... Go back in again, ship designs, we would go, then go to our, I'll have a look at the frigate and see if we can actually do it with the frigate to start with. So we'll go with the um, with the actual iron frigate, we'll just go and edit. We've got nearly 10, if I ditched the, um, the one of the sentinels, we've got sentinels at the front and sentinels at the back. Now that's a, that's probably the one at the front is actually the one that we would be wanting to get rid of I think. We've also got the concussion missiles at the back. Hmm. And if we have a look, we've actually got an empty slot right there. So we could actually go for an assault pod and throw the assault pod in there. That then takes us over by one. <laughs> so we're just one more than what we need. Um, yeah, we'll get rid of the Sentinel. So we'll get rid of one of these Sentinel beams. These are 11. It's going to leave us with, um, with 10. So we may sort of change a few other little things as well. So I probably, in, in, I would, I'd, I'm very loath to get rid of this one. Um, I may even get rid of this of the concussion missile, 
and leave the, the other the sentinels where that is. In this instance, uh, we can then just get rid of this, the short-range sensor array and, and replace that with another of the um, of the countermeasure systems just to give us a bit more survivability. I think that would be okay, actually. I think that would sort of give us a bit of an option. I may, actually, maybe not. Maybe we do go with the um, with the short-range sensor. It does allow us to see see more about the enemy ships, so I'd leave that one back in there. This one's fairly fairly uh, small in terms of what we actually have. We've still got space, even with the uh, with the assault pod on there. Um, what have we got? We've got uh, eighteen. I mean, the other thing we could do would be to put some other sort of weapon in there. I mean, this small epsilon torpedo is only fifteen. We'll throw that one in, or we're actually close to the limits. So it still gives us a uh, another sort of attack. Uh, everything else is looking good there. So that's actually good with an assault pod. It then allows us to take over the ships that we disable. So let's go and save and exit, and uh, that's done. So we, when we do design a, when we do build a fleet, like if I just go into here, for example, or it doesn't matter where I go, if I just go back to my military, back to my fleets, select a defense fleet, and just build a new defense fleet at the uh, North 7 spaceport, that will then queue up those list of ships into the first defense force, and then we're ready to go. So I won't put them into combat. I'll leave it here because we have actually sort of got, gone over time. So I will leave it there, guys. That's the Tekans. This is actually, but I think the important thing is just to know to try to use the the um, the kiting mechanic of being cautious against everyone, which keeps you distant, allows you to then use your iron weapons. They'll be following you. They'll be running into the iron weapon blast and disabling themselves. And then when it's ready, you can then turn around and then capture. So it, I think that that is a very, very good strategy for the Tekans to use. It sort of works with their weakness, uh, but it sort of it turns their weakness into a strength because of the way their ships are designed. It's really fun, the game, the way it sort of does have these sort of little nuances with the actual facing of the weapons. It changes the game so much for each faction. It's sort of one of those things that I think people, it's very easy to overlook this, but it's, it's really, really cool. Anyway, guys, I'll catch you next time. If you do like the video, please consider giving it a thumbs up or, uh, or, or subscribing. It's, it certainly does help. I'll catch you next time. I forgot to mention one thing, so I'll just add this on to the end of it. This is going to be an addendum to our episode on the Tekans. Uh, let's have a quick look. They've got the Trapper Groups, which is their basic infantry. They attack at 65, they defend at 98, and they cost 200. Okay, so all of the basic troops cost 200 to, uh, to maintain. Uh, that's their maintenance cost. But that's 65, 98. So basically 65, 100. Uh, let's just use that as a bit of a guide. Uh, one thing you will be wanting to look at if you are playing as the Tekans is to go across into your research tree and scroll down to the, um, it'll be, actually, where is it? It's going to be the troops. There it is, the second one along. <laughs> You've got robotic troops. Now, for most of the uh, most of the forces that you actually sort of are dealing with, the robotic troops are not really worth it, but for the Tekans, they are. If you have a bit of a look, this is not a Tekan only. This is all, everyone has access to this if they want it. Uh, this one here, they give you a, uh, a maintenance of 100, uh, but the attack is 60, so basically the same attack as the Tekans, just uh, slightly less, and that their defense is 75. Now, at half the price, it means you can have double the amount and you are getting better bang for buck than what you do with the Tekan, the Tekan um, forces. In fact, if you look at it, really anything that's sort of look, like an attack of, of 120 and a, um, and a defense of 150 would be, that's about what two robotic troops would then equate to one of your normal troops being like that. So robotic troops are definitely worthwhile for the Tekans, um, just simply because you can sort of pump them out. They do cost a... Um, a lot less to maintain uh, back in through there as well. The recruitment cost of 1,250. Actually, I didn't actually, I'll just go back and have another quick look to see what they've got. If we just go back to the alien races, Tekken, and have a quick look and see what the uh, what the cost is. Actually, it's not telling us what the actual uh, cost is in through there. We'll have a quick look and see if we can see what the actual cost is per unit to build. If we go back into here, it's going to cost 2,000. So it, so it does cost ultimately, actually no, it costs more to, yeah, more to build the robotic troops, but overall the actual, the impact of the robotic troops is going to be better 
than um, than just having like a single like two robotic troops. It's going to be much much better than having one Tekken um, um, armed force, uh, one tra uh, trapper trapper group. Anyway, I'll leave it there. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.